Tim up on the non Hello there. Well, today is Saturday and this is Richard Barnes, happy to be back in ATV land again, inviting you to watch another of those extravaganzas, epic programmes known as Today is Saturday, Watch and Smile, or for short, Tis Was. And, uh, uh, oh, no, thank you very much. No notes this time. I've learnt that from my last appearance here. Thank you very much. What's that? What's that? Programme's gone down the drain? No, I said drain, not rain. Rain? Oh, no, rain. Lay down, boys. Honestly, I mean, this is ridiculous. Come back again to ATV, they say. On Tis Was, and the first 30 seconds of the programme, it has to happen. I don't know. I hope it's not going to go on like this for the rest of the show. Oh, no. oh. Oh. Bob? Bob, come on, everyone's waiting. Bob! Bob! Bob, what are you doing? Go away, go away. And now it's over to our own blonde, curly-headed, handsome, rugged daredevil, Mr. Wonderful himself, the man of whom Muhammad Ali said, floats like a buttercup, stings like a tree. <laughs> yes, it's the one and only, the person you've all been waiting for. This is what television's yes, all about. Will you get it? Get what? off. Get off. <laughs> Okay. Hello, good morning, and welcome to Flan Your Folk. Be quiet. Welcome to Flan Your Folks, a programme on which we say hello and welcome to Flan Your Folks, a programme that's totally unlike any other programme that's like this. If you're watching this, you're definitely switched on. If you're not watching this, you're probably definitely switched off, or you might be switched over to the other side. Either way, we couldn't care less. Let's introduce some of the uh, fabulous contestants. First of all, some fabulous prizes to be won, as you can see. Uh, Flanderella, can you bring them out for us, please? We should be meeting the marvellous sports, the Evans family from Rugeley. There they are. Give them a big hand. Come on, what's the matter with you? Come on, come on. That's right, sir. If you can come over here. And, of course, the man in black, the mystery man behind the mask who has terrified a cowed cosmos since time in, 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 for years. I shall be asking you several questions. Now, if you get them right, now listen to this, because it concerns you particularly. I shall be asking you several questions. If you get them right, your mum gets several buckets of water and a custard pie. But you get as many fabulous prizes as the lovely Flanderella can give you, OK? But alas, if you get one wrong, you've still got lots of prizes, but your dad gets custard pies and buckets of water. <laughs> yeah, OK, what could be fairer than that? Oh, and if you, oh, if you drop any of your prizes, uh, a little noise will sound, probably something like... that. <laughs> well, we use that now, he found it. Right. <laughs> 
great stuff, eh? Subtle stuff. Right, uh, you, if you drop your prizes, uh, that noise will sound or something very similar, and uh, <laughs> your mum and your dad both get custard pies and more buckets of water. OK, so it's a nicely balanced contest. OK, uh, let's make a start. What's your name? Stuart. Stuart is absolutely right! Great! Fantastic! <laughs> there are prizes. Stay there, mum. That's it. Well, there you are. You're doing very well indeed. More prizes, I think. There you are. I've got a cabbage so far. Great. That's right. Your name is Stuart. Absolutely right. I hadn't really started, but nevertheless. Um, are you only good at football? You probably are, aren't you? Right. How many players in a football team? Seven. And eight, nine... Ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the goalie. The goalie. No Eleven. Eleven is right. No way. Ah, but it's... Hang on. It is actually in several parts, this question. Wait a minute. It's all right. We'll, it's all right. We'll come to you in a minute. Right. Okay. How many goals do they have at each end of the pitch? Is it just the one at each end, or do they have two each end? Two. Uh, I must take your second answer. I can only give you two chances. <laughs> one. Uh, is that some, but, but it's still in several parts, so uh, don't fidget. Now, what do they call the man who, who wrote this? What do they call the man who runs about in the middle of the pitch with a whistle in his mouth? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm mulling you, they call him all sorts of things. Sorry. Um, uh, not the goal, you must take your second answer. In the black with the whistle. Short sight, <laughs> deaf in both ears. No, but it's still in several parts. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mum. Wait for it, Flan Finger. Hang on. Oh. Right, three parts so far. Three parts. Stop laughing. Right. Who won the Amateur Cup final in 1926? You don't, don't know. know. Have a guess. Uh, uh, <laughs> Have a guess. Wolverhampton <laughs> Monroe. Aston Villa. Barry Grayson. <laughs> Have a guess. <laughs> Must ha away. The referee is completely wrong. Sorry, no. <laughs> it was Northern Nomads who beat Stockton seven goals to one. The game was played at Sunderland, Tyne, and Weir. Right. <laughs> Uh, now, nicely balanced contest so far. How do you pronounce... Oh, it's Pay bad. attention. Be quiet, Mum. How do you pronounce I-D-O-N-T-K-N-O-W? <laughs> Wait a minute! I don't know, he's absolutely right. Well done. Once again, your mum gets all the fun and you get all the prizes. Well, there we are. Once again, the old enemy's beaten us. It's time for me to say, two blue, two red, but hopefully, I'll be the They were all talking in hushed tones about numerous, will you leave my running order alone, numerous reported sightings of a dangerous werewolf in the heart of the city. Hello, London, 1979. Howls in the night. Strange shapes in the shadows, bites in the neck. Reports are coming in that not only have werewolves been seen in London, but they're also biting people in the neck. But surely such reports are the fertile figments of people's imaginations. Not today is that the sort of thing that you would get in the teeming streets of London, the metropolis, the place where people come from all over the world to see our sights. Such things are surely the sort of thing they would talk about in these far-off countries, but not in London. In the ignorant darkness of the Middle Ages, the superstitious peasant explained the inexplicable by attributing it to the shadows in the forest. The howl of the wolf, the moonlight shining through the oak trees, all these things, the, the strange visitor to the village, all these things that uh, the ignorant peasants could not understand, gave rise to the myth of the werewolf. Can you describe a werewolf? A werewolf? Yes. He's quite like you in a way. He's That's got true. He's beard, moustache and hairy hands. Now what do werewolves do? I thought they raped and plundered. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> what do you mean by good morning? A werewolf, yes. Pretty weird creature, fairly hairy. Yes. And uh, I think the most important thing is probably the psychic aspect of the werewolf, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite a big bloke, I reckon, with uh, 
So you flop him and uh, <laughs> he's got, got quite a lot of air around his chin. Do you believe in werewolves? Uh, yeah, I think I do. You ever been bitten by one? Yeah, quite a good one. <laughs> look right there, look. See it there. He didn't bite your neck? No. Nah. Just bit your I hand. was lucky, I was lucky, I reckon. But there are reports that werewolves have been seen in London. Have you seen any? No, but what? I've only stayed here for two days now. Bad in hospital, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. bad it was. What happened? Oh, the, the nurse didn't believe me. She fainted. What would you do if a werewolf was to attack you? I wouldn't struggle. No. <laughs> the nurse goes, cool, I think you're going to have to do something here. So, um, where, where were you attacked? Where was I attacked? Oh, I think it was it's Dartmoor. Already, it? Is it Dartmoor? I think yeah, it's Dartmoor. Already... Good morning. Good morning. Do you know werewolves? Pardon? Do you know, have you heard of werewolves? Werewolves. Werewolves. The creatures which attack people and bite their necks. No. You I have not heard of these? actually write in saying, do we let the people out of the cage? Well, I can assure you, they go in at 10.30 and that's it, they stay there. Once in, they're in until 12.30. We just do not let them out at all. Anyway, I must just say a couple of uh, quick happy birthdays. First of all, happy birthday to Tertia Werry, who's four today. I hope you have a, a lovely birthday, Tertia. And also happy birthday to Stephen Bayliss of Headless Crafts in Redditch and Neil Martin of West Bromwich. Well, as you can see from the plush surroundings and from having seen the show so far, money is obviously no object on this production. And in fact, we've even got our own private jet, which during the last three minutes has whisked Chris down to London, which of course is my old stamping ground. Special hello to any old Saturday scene viewers who might be watching. Anyway, Chris is down in the capital asking typical viewers what they make of it so far. Are you there, Chris? Well, yes, indeed, Sally. After exactly one hour of receiving Tiswas, the metropolis here absolutely seething with excitement. Tremendous reception I got. Well worth the high-speed journey down here. I thought while I was down here, I'd ask a typical Londoner what he thinks of the show so far. Good morning, sir. Are you from London? No. Uh, do you live somewhere in England? Abu Dhabi. You're from Wales, I see. What do you think of the programme Tiswas so far? Have you enjoyed it? Uh, I am intrigued with this mystery man in black. The phantom plampling. Mm. I will give you a goat for him. It's more than generous. What, what else about the programme so far? Um, I am enchanted with this silly James. Sally James. Yes, she Sally. is rather lovely, isn't she? In a mature sort of way. Mm. Yes. I will give you two bales of camel dung for her. Mm. Well, we'll probably take you off on that. That's rather more than we've ever been offered before. Mm. Um, what about the actual content of the kids themselves? Uh, very good. Very, very good. I tell you, as well as the goat and the two bales of camel dung, I'll give you an oil well and a bucket of sand for the whole programme. Thank you very much indeed. Well, as you can see, that's uh, from the heart there, really, from a typical London. Obviously, a fantastic reaction around here. Back to you uh, very, very proudly here from London. Join you in a few minutes. Fast as I can get back up there, Sally. Well, that was more than we could possibly have I'll very much look forward to receiving those two buckets of camel dung. Thank you, thank you very much for that. That's very kind.